Hello, I'm Barry Shore, Professor Emeritus at the University of New Hampshire and Head of Product Development here at SSGI. When patients arrive at the Bailey Eye Clinic in Houston, the name has changed, but the situation is authentic. It takes over two hours before their annual exams are completed. At the Northeast Ophthalmology Center in New York, the procedure takes less than an hour. No difference in procedures, but very different patient processing times. This is true of so many processes from manufacturing to healthcare. Process efficiency varies across industries and organizations within those industries. Yes, it is very likely that Lean Six Sigma, which focuses on efficiency and quality can help. Efficiency at the Bailey Eye Clinic could be improved and more importantly, it could be improved with no sacrifice to quality. There are four levels of competency and certification associated with the practice of Lean Six Sigma. The first is the yellow belt, an introduction to the skills and methodologies of this discipline. The second is the green belt, which explores those areas in somewhat more detail, including an introduction to the statistical tools used in process control. The third is the black belt, which dives even deeper into these concepts and skills while also preparing individuals to lead small projects. The highest level is the master black belt, which focuses on leading larger scale and more complex Lean Six Sigma projects. To begin, it is important to separate Lean from Six Sigma. Lean primarily focuses on process efficiency. Its objective is to eliminate delays, errors, and waste. For example, a Lean project would be appropriate to improve efficiency at the Bailey Eye Clinic. It would focus on those delays leading to long patient processing times and then focus would shift to eliminating them. Or we might study the training program for online customer service agents at an international airline. Management would like to make the training process more efficient. At present, it takes six months to train representatives. Is it possible to shorten the time to become a productive member of the customer service team? Again, another application for a lean. Six Sigma, on the other hand, focuses on consistency and control. The reality is that the output from almost every process varies. Consider a new car purchase. When Adele purchased a new Honda, one of her first trips was from New York to Miami. After spending a day with a friend, the car failed to start. The problem, a shorted battery. So perfect process outcomes, even for companies with the reputation for high quality, are elusive. The reality is that high quality and consistency are challenging for organizations to sustain and is the focus of many Lean Six Sigma studies. Once we have uncovered a problem or opportunity that needs to be addressed, it is important to think about how to proceed. What has become clear to Lean Six Sigma professionals is that an organized approach is essential. Unless organized, outcomes can be disappointing. This is why all professionals in this area rely on an approach called a MAIC. The D represents the definition of the problem. It must be clear, concise, and free of jargon. The next step is M, or measurement. Simply said, if a situation can't be measured, then it will be almost impossible to determine how it has been improved once the changes have been implemented. So we need data. Then we analyze that data with the intent of uncovering the root cause of the problem, not just its symptoms. Next, we determine how the problem or situation can be improved. Finally, we establish a control system so that we can monitor the process over time and ensure that it continues to meet objectives. To better understand a process, Lean Six Sigma professionals begin with a SIPOC diagram. 
SIPOC is shorthand for suppliers, inputs, process, outputs, and customers. It is a diagram that identifies all the suppliers, inputs, process steps, output, and customers. By undertaking this analysis, they are assured of a better understanding of the process from its beginning to its end. Value stream maps are flowcharts that graphically display the flow of work or people from one end of a process to another. So we might draw a flowchart of patients moving through an emergency department at a hospital or some assemblies moving through an assembly process at a factory. These charts are very helpful when analyzing a process and pinpointing where delays or waste occur. Each step in these processes is represented by a rectangle. The flow is from left to right. Often these maps are used to describe the flow before corrective action is taken, and again at the end of the improved stage to document the new process. Where do we look for process improvement opportunities? Experience in Lean Six Sigma has taught us that there are eight areas worth exploring. Here are those areas as well as the challenges that might be encountered. Transportation logistics. Too much movement of people and items. Inventory. Too much or too little inventory. Motion. Unnecessary movement when performing a job that adds little or no value. Waiting. Idle work or staff that adds little or no value, such as idle time between operations. Overprocessing, efforts that add little or no value to a product or service. Overproduction, producing more than the customer requires. Defects, work that is rejected, reworked, or scrapped. Human resources, failure to utilize the time and talents of people. What about the way in which the workplace is organized? The lean literature identifies five suggestions for improving process efficiency. First is sort. Organize the workplace so that what you need is in a predictable and easy to access location. Second, set in order. Choose a specific location where supplies will be stored. Eliminate the need to search when performing a specific sequence of steps. Shine, establish a clean work and storage environment. Four, standardize. Standardize what has been accomplished. Everyone should know where to find what they need. And last, sustain. Enforce standards over time. Make the 5S part of group culture. When the phrase Six Sigma quality or Six Sigma process is used, it expresses a very specific level of quality. A Six Sigma process is one that delivers fewer than 3.4 defects per million opportunities. Here are some examples of how this concept can be applied in practice. A restaurant would deliver fewer than 3.4 defective meals per 1 million meals. A hospital would experience fewer than 3.4 infections per 1 million patients. An auto insurance company would experience fewer than 3.4 errors per million claims. An airline would experience fewer than 3.4 late departures per million departures. A printer manufacturer would experience fewer than 3.4 million defective units per 1 million produced. Indeed, these are very high standards and may be appropriate for surgical procedures at hospitals, nuclear power plants, and aircraft safety 
but they would be very costly when delivering meals at restaurants or entering customer data into insurance forms. For them, a four or five sigma level would be more appropriate. Of course, you could always deliver six sigma quality from a restaurant kitchen, but few if any customers would be willing to pay the high price that would support this level of quality. The output from every process varies. No two running shoes assembled at a factory are exactly the same. No two meals at a restaurant are exactly the same. And no two patients will experience the exact same level of care in a hospital. In Lean Six Sigma, we are concerned about this level of variance because we need to ensure reasonable consistency of output. In other words, we need to maintain quality over time in the face of normal levels of variation. When variation gets too large, it might be that our processes are out of control and we are no longer capable of delivering consistent results. For example, when patient satisfaction falls from 90 to 65, we would suspect that the caregiving process has failed to deliver consistent care. Once a process has been designed or redesigned, steps must be taken to ensure that its output remains within acceptable limits. We need assurance that the natural variation of the process is maintained within bounds. To ensure this, we take periodic samples of output and plot the results on a control chart. Here is a description of a typical control chart. The vertical axis, Y, represents sample results such as patient satisfaction. The horizontal axis, X, represents the date or time the sample was taken. The center horizontal line represents the average level of process output for a process that is in control. The line above the average represents the upper control limit or the point above which sample results suggest the process is out of control. The lower horizontal line represents the lower control limit below which a sample result suggests the process is out of control. Finding the cause of a problem after it has occurred and then correcting it is certainly one way to manage process performance. In most situations, however, it makes more sense to be proactive and prevent it from happening in the first place. We can do this by convening a brainstorming session and then exploring the possible vulnerabilities of the process. Then we can make changes that will minimize the risk of certain events from occurring. This process is called failure mode and effects analysis or FMEA. Here are several challenges. How would you improve the design of roadways to prevent accidents? How would you prevent the driver of a rental truck from crashing into a low roof at a gas station? How would you prevent software users from sending an email but neglecting to add an attachment that is mentioned in the body of the email? How would you redesign an information system to increase security? Pokayoke is a Japanese term that can be translated as mistake proofing. It typically involves the use of systems, software, procedures, or devices to reduce or eliminate the possibility that an error will occur or makes the error instantly noticeable once it does occur. Examples include the lane departure warning system in an automobile, SD cards that can only be inserted in one direction, and the handle on a lawnmower that will stop the blade from rotating when it is released by the operator. That's it, a quick introduction to Lean Six Sigma. We hope it has succeeded in raising your curiosity about the endless possibilities to improve process performance and how you can make a difference in your organization. If it has succeeded, then consider taking SSGI's Yellow Belt Certification course in Lean Six Sigma, or if you are comfortable with basic statistics, 
we recommend moving directly into the green belt. Also, not to be overlooked, is that certification in this area will very likely prove helpful in moving your career forward. Not only does SSGI offer courses in the full range of belts, from yellow to master black belt, but they also offer a range of courses in process management and leadership. Click below for more information. Thanks for watching.